Eight minutes, how to configure the FMS in the 737 MAX. Here we go, Captain. For the purpose of this video, our flight plan for today will be the classic Philly to Boston using SimBrief. If you want more information about how to create and understand a flight plan using SimBrief, feel free to check our dedicated video about that. Let's start with the tutorial. On startup, the first page visible on the FMC will be this one. You would find the type of your aircraft, IRAC navigation date, and a couple of other information. Let's skip to the next page, clicking the lower right button. In this position in it page, you would be asked to enter your departure airport. In order to do that, enter the airport thanks to the keyboard, then click the associated button on the screen. Interaction with the FMC are pretty simple. Your pre-selection would be visible here, then you can input it via one of the 12 buttons available on the side. Let's continue to next page talking about route and flight plan. In that section, enter again the departure airport and then destination airport. Our call sign for today will be Rock Your Wings 250. As you can see on top right of the FMC, there is a second page available for this menu. You can navigate through different page using previous and next page button. This new page is where we define our routing for today's flight. On the right, you can enter any RNAV waypoint, and the left is dedicated for airways. First waypoint of our flight plan is ditch, so we enter it. If you want to add any other direct waypoint, just enter them in the list. In this example, we added Los Angeles and New York Airport to our flight plan. If you want to delete a waypoint, just click the DEL button, then click the associated waypoint to be deleted. Easy, right? Let's get back to our flight plan. After ditch, we will enter airway Q437 until HANA, then join Q450 until the Kennedy VR. In order to verify your flight plan, please go to the EFIS and move that knob to PLN, then unzoom a little bit. You would see on the navigation display a top view of your aircraft with the north as a reference. Currently, the route is dashed in blue, meaning it's temporary. If you are happy with the flight plan, you can click Activate, then Execute. The route color turned to magenta, as it's now active. As you might notice, the current route is missing departure and arrival. In order to add them, click the Departure Arrival button on the FMC. According to our flight plan, the departure is on runway 27 left, but unfortunately this runway is not visible on our FMC. In order to access it, just click Next Page button and you'll find it. On the left of the screen, you would find all of the departure available for this runway. In our case, there is only one, which is the Philly 3. Press Execute to save your change. Departure is set. Now let's check about Arrival. Click again on Departure Arrival button, then choose Arrival. From the flight plan, we might land on runway 22 left, going with the Roebuck 3 arrival and a Kennedy VOR transition. Click again Exec to save. Now our flight plan is ready. We got departure, en route, and arrival. It's always good practice to verify that your flight plan has no issues. In order to do that, be sure to be on PLN mode on the EFIS, then click the legs button. You would find on the lower right an option called step. This step button gives you the opportunity to cycle through each of your waypoints, allowing you to verify the well-being of your flight plan. Please note there is a discount annuity at the end of the arrival. That's normal. For more information about that, please check our video about how to fly a star. Flight plan is set, now we can configure the performance page during takeoff. Click the init ref button, and you would find the performance init page. First field to enter is our cruise altitude, which is flight level 230 for today. The cost index is a number that will calculate overall performance of the aircraft depending on your schedule. If the plane is late, you would have a higher cost index. If the plane is early, you would want to save on fuel and preserve the engine wear, so a lower cost index might be defined. In real life, the cost index is defined by your company, but in our simulation world, we can take the one from SimBrief. Next parameter is the zero fuel weight that we can have by just clicking the corresponding button on the FMS, then click again to apply it. By doing that, it will automatically calculate the gross weight of our aircraft, which will be important for the next page. As usual, click Execute to save, then let's continue to N1 limit. This next page allows you to define which thrust your engine would run during takeoff and landing. To give it a bit of context, when a plane takes off, it doesn't use all of its power. 
because repeating this operation over and over would put too much wear on engines and might not be efficient for fuel economy. As a result, the Boeing company provides us with three parameters for takeoff and three parameters for climb thrust settings that will voluntarily derate engines' power in order to reduce wear and fuel consumption. The logic is simple. The longer the runway is, the lower thrust you would want your aircraft to operate. For example, a 15,000 feet runway would be way enough for a T0-2 setting. But as these settings might sound like a make-a-guess stuff, Simbrief provides us a tool to calculate it. Go back to your Simbrief flight plan and click Take Off Performance tab in the upper right corner. Please change weight unit as pounds and enter the gross weight of your aircraft, calculated in the previous page. In our case, it was 147,900 pound. For flaps settings, Please use 5 degrees as a standard for the 737, then click Calculate. On the right side of the page, you would find our setting for thrust, which is T0-2, and also the SEL temp, which is 50. Click T0-2 for takeoff performance, then enter 50 in the cell temp field. That will automatically adjust the optimal thrust depending on the runway length, weather condition, etc. We can now continue to the takeoff page. That page will give us important settings, like our V-speeds and trim configuration. First, let's input flaps to 5 degrees, then click the center of gravity button two times. It will extract our CG setting. Once activated, the trim setting will appear as 4.75, so we can immediately turn the trim to the dedicated number. No need to be pixel perfect. This position will be okay. Back to our FMS, last thing to do is validating the V-speeds by clicking each of the three button on the left. V1 is the speed at which the airplane is obligated to take off no matter what happens. VR is the rotation speed, where you would pull on the yoke and pitch the aircraft. V2 is the takeoff safety speeds or minimum speed to ensure safe climb with an engine failure. A good habit is to set V2 plus 10% in the autopilot, because this will be the first speed to aim at during initial climb. To calculate 10% of something, just remove the last digit of a number and add it to the total. In our case, 150 plus 15 equal 165 during initial climb. Congratulations, you successfully configured the FMS. Last thing I forgot to talk about is the fuel quantity needed for your journey. By default, MSFS will spawn the plane with 20,000 pound of fuel, which is okay for a two to three hour flight. But if you plan to go further, you might need to increase fuel before spawning. Remember that if your payload change after configuring the FMS, whether it is passenger, cargo, or fuel, you need to go back to the Perf Init page and redo the process. Congratulations, you successfully configured the FMS. Now you can push back and start up. Next video will be about takeoff. Thanks for watching. Feel free to like and subscribe for more content. Safe flight, Captain.